everybody. Welcome to Biters. This is uh, episode something or other. Do not know. This isn't even what what episode are we doing? I'm lost. What this are we doing is, here? This um, is. I'm on the wrong show. <laughs> this is episode date of death, and it is episode thirteen, season two. Boom. See, as you can tell by the voices in the intro. This is Brian, your zombified 30-something, and... This is Marnell, your co-host of Last Resort, also known as Diane's little sister. Boom! So, as you can tell, the cat's away, the mice will play, we don't have a script, we don't have numbers, we don't even have an intro put together. We're just doing this out of our kindness and pure pleasure we get talking about Fear of the Walking Dead. I'm finally on with Brian. I'm so honored. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm pretty excited. Um, we've had our kind of baseline intro conversation before we hit the record button. Uh, yeah, we, Brian had never, uh, we've never actually talked before. I've solely been been on with Diane, so. Well, you've uh, talked to me on the show. I just never responded because I couldn't hear you because you were yelling at me probably, right? Right. I was like, oh my God, Brian is so right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Diana is always wrong. Brian is always right. So that's a pretty important thing to remember. See, and this is going to be interesting to know how this is going to go because you and I are in agreement, and it's usually you and Diana are kind of at opposite ends, and Diana and I are kind of opposite ends, and you and I are pretty much on the same page with this episode. Yeah. And she's listening to us sitting in her chair somewhere right now, listening to the podcast, being like, "Oh, you bastards!" So, <laughs> ha ha, we're in control right now. You're not. That's what you get for taking some time off. That's right. Epic fail on your part. Epic fail. So, what do you think? We have no stats. We have nothing. So, we're just going to roll right into it. I gave it my lowest rating of any episode that I have ever reviewed for either of the podcasts that I do, which you should check out Diane and I's other podcast um, on AMC's Preacher podcast. Uh, I hear it's pretty good. I gave this a... <laughs> 2.1 flimsy iron gates. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. That was so that that was a pretty chintzy ass gate, if I must say. Yeah. But a 2.1, huh? A 2.1. You know, I wanted to I actually wanted to give it a two, but I'm like, that's too close to a one, and I'm not that harsh. I mean, even if the service is bad, I still tip 15%. I'm a pushover. Like a gate. Like, like an iron a, gate. Like a chintzy gate garden a hotel, right? Yep. Um, yeah. so I'm a little bit different and I'll explain myself beforehand. I love this episode, which we'll get into it all the way up until the last 10 minutes. So <gasps> I love the last 10 minutes because I hated it so much. I hate watch now. <laughs> so I had to bring my rating down to three miraculous headshots out of five. Oh, we're not that far off. Yeah. So not too far off. I wanted to give it higher, but the ending did not go how I anticipated it to go, so I gave it a little bit different. Really? The very, very last scene wasn't amazing? Well, I'm not saying the last scene. I'm saying that last, like, kind of... Okay. We'll talk about I know, it. I know where you're going with it. Yeah, we'll talk about yep. it. Yep. So, what was your epic? So, my epic, and it was a hard pill to swallow for me, is that I really liked Travis's story here about... Mm -hmm. How no matter what, he was going against what, uh, let's just call them the boys, the boys were doing. And the real key moment for me, and I really seen this building up, was when uh, Travis buries him and Chris is drinking the beer. I don't know if it's a beer, if it's a pop or what. I just assumed it was a beer. It's a Foster's. It's a Foster's. Yeah. So. Yeah. He's like, come over here. Let me talk to you. And he's like trying to teach him that, look, this is the guy you killed. And he's like, so what? And then he hits the beer out of his hand. And the look on Chris's face is just like, huh, whatever. I'm, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Okay. So did you listen to Diana's last episode that we recorded for this? No, I have not gotten to that point yet. Okay. We refer to them as Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies. Okay. Right? It's perfect. Yeah. And they actually did on The Talking Dead last night, too. So. Oh, look at you guys ahead of the power curve. Exactly. Trendsetters. That's probably what Chris, it was. Chris Hardwick, Hardwick listens to our show. Yeah. He listened. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm going to rip off these no-name guys. That sounds cool. Exactly. Bastard. Um, 
So I I was watching this episode. So let me just go back a second. Um, when Madison finds Travis and she's like, where's Chris? And he looked at her with just this, you know, gut shot. Despondent. He, yeah. He just said, he left me no choice. So instantly mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I thought mm-hmm. he killed him. He killed yep. his son. Oh my God, this is going to be freaking awesome. So as this was going on and these things were happening with Travis and Chris and Chris is like, dad, you don't fit in with these guys. You proved yourself. Don't mess this up. I don't want you to be careful. To me, it was like they've already had conversations about killing him and moving on. Mm -hmm. And especially when the one leader kid was like, you know, your professor crap is getting real old. And I'm like, they're going to kill him. They're going to kill him. Oh, my God. Travis is going to kill them. He's going to sense it, feel it, dodge a bullet like the Matrix, and kill them. (laughs) This is going to be awesome. So I really had myself pumped because I really loved this storyline on how it was just this combatant thing. And no matter what, he just kept looking death in the face and refused to budge off his position, which I typically hated him for that. But in this scenario, yeah, I right. really enjoyed it. Yeah, because the boys are so psychopathic that you just you just know they're going to have to die in some horrible way. And why not be at the hands of Travis, you know, in defense of Chris? Yeah, absolutely. So what's your epic, young lady? My, you know, for as low as I rated the ep- episode, my my epic is that we we got to see Chris and Travis's story. You know, I I know that you absolutely hate Chris, but I I love Chris for the for how much he is so crazy. Like I was doing some research today, and we should have seen this coming. I mean, Chris was a little psychopath from the beginning, and he's hated his father since the beginning. I mean, when all of this started to go down, uh, Chris wouldn't even answer his father's phone call and he didn't even want to spend the weekend with Travis. It was Travis's custodial weekend and, and Chris didn't want to go and he wouldn't answer his father's phone. And the way that, uh, Travis actually finally got a hold of Chris was calling from his ex wife, uh, Chris's mother's phone and, Uh, Chris answers and hears his father's voice and immediately hangs up. I mean, he and Travis have never had a good relationship. And so to see these two out on their own and Chris being under the influence of people that are probably more psychotic than he is, that, you know, this, I, I really, I loved the episode. I think it just, it dragged on for me. Um, I think I didn't like the whole back and forth with the flashback of Chris and Travis and the current with Madison and Travis. Right. Um, I, I don't like it when they flash back and flash forward in any show like that. Um, unless there's some sort of definitive line, like I think in preacher, they, they do a black and white flashback. And so it's just, I don't like time jumps. It's sure. wacky. To me. Um, but so that was that was my epic is that I, I absolutely love the the Chris and Travis um, uh, just their their interaction with each other, having to confront each other and not even really confronting each other um, because they they haven't had a heart to heart. And I really think that eventually if Chris comes back into where Travis winds up that they are going to have to sit down and have a come to Jesus meeting um, about everything, even before stuff that happened before the apocalypse. So I am waiting on that, but who knows if that'll happen in the two hour season finale. Sure. All right. Well, no, that's good. So we kind of had similar epics. We did. We did. So what's your fail? My uh, fail (laughs) And it's kind of a funny fail. It's very, very small. And it has to do with Travis and Chris's interaction. It was when Travis smacks the beer out of Chris's hand. And I can't help but think, and I've thought it for a couple episodes now, of it's the apocalypse and your 16-year-old is acting out. What are you going to do? It's not like you can ground them. It's not like you can take their Xbox away. You know? 
the it was it was such an impotent gesture that I just I I kind of I feel sorry for Travis that that's that's all he's got is to smack the beer out of Chris's hand and Chris just looks at him with this smirk on his face like that's all you can do mm-hmm. that that was my fail is just that the the impotence of of being able to parent in the apocalypse thankfully I don't have children with two legs. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, so along those lines, my fail was that I thought Travis was going to kill them all. <laughs> um, you, you thought or you hoped? Yeah, well, both. And so they, they, it turned out that that's not what happened at the end. So back to your comment. When it happened, it just, you're right. There's nothing you can do. And you either make them see the light or, as referenced in Walking Dead proper, if they don't understand the rules of the new world, they're a danger to everybody and you have to put them down. Hence, mm-hmm. Carol killing Lizzie. Yeah, look at the flowers. Look at the flowers, Lizzie. So, yep. you know, that's that's the whole point is at the end of the day, he had to let his kid go. He had yeah. to let him go because there was nothing he could do about it. And nope. he knew if he fought, he was going to die. Those other kids were going to kill him and possibly even Chris at that right. moment. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, killing Chris was no skin off their nose other than, you know, they, they had already lost a friend and Chris had kind of proven his worth in that, you know, he, he could walk up and stab a walker in the, the head. Unlike these guys that, you know, they kind of hide behind their bullets. Whereas as, um, I'll he's get got, into- yeah, he's got more hand to hand skills. Yeah, I'll get into it a little later, but Chris has a lot more experience with killing than I think that a lot of people remember. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, mine was just, um, I agree with yours, and I, I just, I had hyped myself up, so this goes back to my rating, <laughs> is that I had hyped myself up all the way through that, that he was going to kill Chris. At some point, Chris was going to die by Travis's hands, because that look he gave Madison and said, he left me no choice. Oh, and then you then you saw Chris betray Travis, and you probably thought that this is it. Yeah, like, oh my God, this is going to happen. And then we go into the barn where, mm-hmm. you know, Travis takes the gun and shoots a round off at the guy's feet, and then he walks back into the barn, you know, and Chris comes in. He's like, oh, they're down the road. And I'm like, okay, sounds kind of fishy. But then Chris was saying everything right. You know, you're probably going to tell me that, uh, these guys are, they're going to kill me if they just killed their best friend. They've known since mm-hmm. he was six and you know, they're probably going to kill this and they're going to do this. And it's like, Oh my God, cool. He gets it. Maybe, you know, he's going to turn a different way. And then he held him like, guys come in and they rushed in and they killed the guy and the one kid still had him at gunpoint. So Chris had his gun out with his dad and one of the other friends had his gun at his dad's head. While the other one shot the friend. Yeah. So I'm like, here it is. Like, he's going to get a gun somehow and kill all three of them in this barn. Because he knows that they are literally going to just ruthlessly kill all the way through. So to me, I was like hyping this up in my head that Travis is going to realize to save the lives, he's going to have to make them look at the flowers, essentially. And kill them before they can kill other people. Right. Knowing that all hope is gone at this point. That is the only way that I could see uh, Travis killing anybody is basically in defense of of someone he loves. Because um, Chris has actually killed more than Travis has. Uh, Travis hasn't really killed anybody. Um, I I think he may have have knifed a couple of walkers. But... um, Chris has actually killed two living people. So mm-hmm. um, to kill Derek and Brandon, even after they had killed James, who was, you know, slowly dying of his infected bullet wound. Um, I, I really think it would have had to come down to saving Chris. And I, until Chris attacked Travis in the barn, I actually didn't think that Chris was that far gone. You know, but mm-hmm. having having attacked Travis, you know, he's he's pretty far gone and it's going to take a lot for him to come back into the the 
the fold of the the prime group. Um, but yeah, that that really shocked me that that. Chris betrayed Travis like that. And I, I expected a lot more death in that scene too, but I, yeah, I didn't expect Chris to die. So I, that's where you and I kind of differed is that, uh, I always thought that Chris survived even when Travis said there was nothing I could do. Yeah. I, I, I actually figured like Brandon or somebody was going to kill Chris. I didn't think that, uh, I didn't think Travis could have killed Chris. Hmm. Well, we shall see. We haven't seen the last of them yet, obviously, because we see them. Did you catch that? We see uh, Brandon and Derek, but we do not see Chris. I think that's by design. I think he's just left out of the shot. Yeah, I was going to say, there is a still frame going around the internet of, you see Brandon up front, Derek slightly behind him, and then about 10 feet behind, behind Derek, there is... Someone with dark hair, so that is probably Chris, and it was probably intentionally left out of this shot, because yeah. I do think that Chris has um, credits in the last two episodes. So. Well, you know, they're they're never going to give me what I wish for, so people who listen all the time know that I wish for the instance to happen where um, they just never hear from someone again. Yeah, you know, I I want to say that that's Ophelia, but I think that they they built that up too much. Yeah, um, we'll hear from her. I think she's gonna find her dad. But there there was a um an article that I was reading that was like, you know, in the real world, you know, none of these people would ever hear from each other again. But somehow they all keep finding each other. But yeah, that's that's the show for you. I mean, if we've suspended our disbelief enough to you know believe in the zombie apocalypse, then. I think we can all find each other again without Terminus. I agree. All right, so let's move on to the epic fail. So my epic fail here was Madison just realizing at that point when Travis, again, is trying to connect with his, quote, wife, she instantly does what had pushed him away every time. She's like, oh, oh, my God, I got to go. Bye. And she all of a sudden just, after everything that's happened, She just realized, which I do love the line. So, like, I'm a father now, and I get it. And um, I've buried my father, the whole nine yards. So to hear uh, Travis say the last words he may ever hear from me was, God damn you, Chris. Mm -hmm. I just wish I told him that I loved him. That Mm -hmm. was such a powerful statement to me. Like, oh, my God. So true. I didn't even realize that when I was watching. I was too mad that you didn't kill them. <laughs> <laughs> but to hear that, and then all of a sudden, Madison's like, oh, I gotta go. And then she turns and runs away. Like, so Oh, it was, I didn't even put that together. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the, the hard part for me was Madison. Like, it took you all the way to that second, then to run out to Alicia. Like, come on. Like, I hate you so much. <laughs> If I ever meet Kim Dickens personally, it's not going to be great. <laughs> no, no, I agree. Um, we have the same epic fail, but I think for different reasons. Ooh, so my epic, my epic fail was her discussion with Alicia on the pier. Um, when Madison tells Alicia about her father not actually dying in an accident, that he committed suicide and, How do you know? How do you know? Well, he left a note and it said, I love you, but enough is enough. And that really should have been the name of this episode. Oh, yeah. Enough is enough. That would have been good. So actually, time out. Uh, Diane told you so because like three episodes we were discussing. Did he actually kill himself? And I'm like, he totally killed himself. She's like, no, no, I like flowers. No, he didn't kill himself. I'm like, yeah, he did. So, I win. Well, I mean, it was Madison's your wife. It's sort of a given that you Yeah, no kidding. God, it took this long? Life. Jesus. <laughs> so, she's having the discussion with Alice, um, Alicia on the pier. And I, Alicia's epic statement to Madison last episode about turning on the lights and, you know, like... You've always basically been chasing Nick, and I'm your daughter too, and I never left, and Nick made his decision, and yada yada. 
So all of a sudden, Madison is like, oh, by the way, this horrible thing, and we should hug now. Madison totally emotionally manipulated Alicia back into her arms. And oh, I'm yeah. So, I'm so enraged by that. That is a really good catch. Really good catch. Because I don't think your sister would have been able to catch that. So really good job. <laughs> I'm going to take whether- digs at her all night, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> never gonna want to take a night off again <laughs> by the way brian is off next episode so it'll be diane and i taking digs at brian yeah so, yeah yeah turn about so yeah they just like that is and it didn't even occur to me at first like i i seriously totally bought into it i'm like oh that's such a horrible thing that her dad committed suicide and blah, blah. and i'm like oh madison her husband and i'm like a day later i'm like no She totally just manipulated Alicia back into her good graces. I mean, what was the other than other than that? What would be the point of telling your daughter that her dad committed suicide after the zombie apocalypse happens? Doesn't she already have enough on her mind? I mean, her brother is missing. Her stepbrother is missing. You know, like mom, I realize mom is a terrible person and cares nothing for me, but just about my brother. And, you know, like everybody around me is dying and I'm having to kill people. I'm terrified all the time. And now you tell her that her dad committed suicide. Totally, totally emotionally manipulated Alicia. And I'm just so enraged by it. Whether Madison knows she did it or not, whether she's conscious that that is exactly what happened is one thing or another, but she, that's, that's exactly what happened. It was, it was emotional manipulation. That's a really good catch. I appreciate your effort. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) And you see now why that was my epic, epic fail. Yeah. I mean, it does make a lot of sense. So she's out there and she's telling her because, you know, she's like, Alicia's like, mom, I'm right here. Why do you not see this? I'm right here. And she's like, oh, I do, Alicia, I love you. And then all day went by, and it totally, totally makes sense. Yeah, she just, and I, oh, my God, I got to go tell Alicia this. I got to be honest with her because this will get her back into my life. Exactly, exactly. I mean, uh, Travis pulled away from Madison in that scene. Nick is gone. Travis is back, but he pulled away from her when they were talking. He physically pulled away from her. Because didn't she try to kiss him? And he's like, what are yeah. you doing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And all of a sudden, she's like, oh, got to go. I have somebody else that I can emotionally blackmail. Yeah. Yeah. Good catch. You're a oh. ninja. Uh, I'm just, I, I was, when it dawned on me, I was just, I, like, I was heartbroken. And at the same time, I was like, oh, she drew me in. I feel so dirty. <laughs> yeah, you even got hosed over. I did, but you know what? I I'm being hosed over by Chris because I <laughs> I love Chris and I was I was totally when he went into the the barn and had the food for his dad and everything and went to hug his dad. I was right there with you, Chris, and then you betrayed him. And so like I just I can't trust anybody. <laughs> well, you only got one more week to trust. One more week and two more hours. Ooh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll be it on a two-hour yeah. season finale. Um, yeah. Did you smell that? I do. That kind of smells like rotting potpourri. What? Oh, my (laughs) God. Um, So, all right. So, rotting potpourri is our just random thoughts about the episode. Any little facts, anything we've found. And you have some stuff, don't you? I have a lot of stuff. A lot. A lot of stuff. So, this was a, a big Chris and Travis episode. We didn't see Ophelia. We didn't see, um, what's his name? Whose name escapes me? Nickaroni. No, well, we didn't see Nick. That is true. But we also did not see anything from Strand. Victor. Yeah. yeah. So, this was a heavy Chris Travis episode. And so. I spent my lunch hour today taking all of the synopsises from season one and season two and putting them in a Word document. Thank you, copy-paste, because I'm a horrible typist. Um, And so it made it searchable. I could search the word Chris. And I did a little background on Chris because I'm like, 
where did this come from? Like, he's such a sweet, good looking kid. And if you see him like as a regular actor on The Talking Dead, as a you know regular person, he's just he's the sweetest kid. And I'm like, where did this psycho come from? And really, he was hiding there all along. Um, honestly, I don't think if, if if in the alternate universe where his dad dies and his mom is alive, Chris is just fine. He is a mama's boy and he mm-hmm. is doing what he's told in the apocalypse. But, yeah. you know, he watched his dad shoot his mom and then he spent a day with his mom, like crying, like co- catatonic over his mother's corpse on the boat. So um, Chris and Travis originally did not have a good standing to begin with you know um i i don't know what happened before that if it'll ever get explained or anything like that but chris has actually killed two people and i don't know if a lot of the viewers remember that do you remember either of them he killed the one guy with a broken spine in the airplane yep yep so that was a mercy kill that was sort of getting your feet wet you know Mm -hmm. that was that was his taste of blood yeah, I, th- I think we all would have probably put that guy out of his misery before he turned and blah, blah, blah. And us normals probably would have would have gone on without ever, you know, I mean, that would have really haunted us. But it didn't. Ha- it's never really haunted Chris. Do you remember the second person that he killed? The only one I can think of is the, the old man in the barn. Nope. So he's killed three people, technically. He, he has killed three people now. Who else? So, do you remember when Alicia had her little uh, radio buddy and they tried to pirate the uh, boat? Yeah. Chris actually shot one of the guys in the face. He claimed, and he was guarding him. Oh, that's right. He was just cleaning the, he was like, it just went off or whatever. Didn't he say that? He claimed that the guy had turned. He turned and did it, but he didn't because he turned after he killed him. That's right. Right. Right before that, Reed had got Chris all riled up about something. And I can't, it doesn't say what it was. And I can't remember what it was. It just says Reed talks to Chris and riles him up. I think it was about his mom and all that stuff. Yeah. And so Nick leaves Chris with their hostage, with their, which, who they're going to barter for Travis, by the way. So Nick leaves the room and all of a sudden a shot rings out and Nick's the air. Chris is like, oh, yeah, he was he turned, you know, he didn't turn. Chris straight up murdered. That's him. right. I forgot about that one. Yeah, so did I. This is this is why this uh, little searchable thing makes it handy you with your control F. <laughs> So he and what's what's funny about that situation is um, Chris realized he had screwed up the hostage trade mm-hmm. and they might not get his dad back. And it, it kind of a, it kind of affected him, but not in the way that, oh, my God, I'm never going to see my dad again because I just murdered this guy. It like so Chris has been slowly gaining momentum in his psychopathy and. Uh, I don't I don't quite know where it, it, it heads up because we've talked about I, I really I actually think that Chris is redeemable and and I think that he's redeemable because look at look at Walking Dead proper. I mean Carol, she's murdered children, mm-hmm. you know. Uh who hasn't? Dar- I mean pff, whatever. <laughs> Daryl had Daryl had a, a necklace of Walker ears for an entire season, so you know, and and even Merle kind of redeemed himself in the end a little bit. Sure you know, he did. So, you know they people are redeemable in in the apocalypse. I mean, because we have no way to jail people, really. You know, we we Diane and I talked about last episode where um, Eileen had stabbed Strand, and their choices were kill her. Uh, put her out on her on the street or keep her locked up forever. And none of those are really good choices. I mean, yeah, I guess death penalty for stabbing strand, but you can't send her out on her own. She's the first people she's going to meet her. She's going to be like, Hey, by the way, there's a place that has a bunch of food and shelter and water. And all we got to do is kill these eight people, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So you can't send somebody out on their own like that. 
and you're really going to use the resources to keep somebody locked up for life. I mean, how do you punish people in the apocalypse? So people have to be redeemable. They, I mean, it's either they have to be redeemable or, you know, if not, they're going to go full governor or Negan and you're going to have to kill him. So, I mean, you don't have a lot of choices. So I really think that Chris is redeemable, but maybe not. I mean, we... I, if anyone dies in the season finale, I could see it being Chris. Yeah, so let, let's do it. Let's let, let have a bold prediction here. <laughs> so what do we have to clean up? Well, hold Nick? on. Let's let let's do it. Let's let's finish up Rotten Popery first, and we'll play this okay. game. Um. So my Rotten Popery was the whole. Um. Sorry, we can't let you in the gates as all those people are there. <laughs> And they're all just kind of standing there. Okay, I like, love how I'm Oscar sorry. Oscar is like, and this is her fault. And Alicia's like, she knows. <laughs> but that's what pisses me off. Because Madison wasn't that like that big of a deal about it. Yeah, she's just like, I'm sorry, I'm mm-hmm. sorry. But Madison on the boat when they drove by a boat full of people, mm. you were freaking out on Strand to mm-hmm. go back to them. Yep. So. Now all of a sudden you're just like, and I, I get it. You learn lessons as you go, but this is your fault. And she's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We can't. And everybody else was just like, whatever, this is your fault. And they turn and walk away. I don't see that. I don't see that happening like that. I have seen it as more violent. And even then when they opened the gate, how did someone not, I would have grabbed her hair and literally tried to rip her head off. You're not going to let me in. I am going to kill you. <laughs> Right. That that gate. I mean, it really just would have taken about twenty of those people to rush forward. I mean, that gate. Yeah, flimsy iron gate. Or why didn't you just climb it? Yeah, you know, we were talking about that, and I was like, I don't know where they got enough barbed wire to go around that entire hotel compound. There has got to be some breaks in the security somewhere that, yes, maybe walkers can't get through. But I'm totally throwing a coat over that that. Uh, razor wire and climbing over yeah i mean something. No, no problem um so that was that um i also wrote down father committing suicide but i can't think of the thought that created that probably just the whole emotional manipulation that madison did to alicia oh and, yeah that's what it was and the rest <laughs> of us i was like who the hell committed suicide where did this comment come from yeah I really, what was the point of that other than the emotional manipulation? Yeah, so I guess we did cover that. Um, yeah. So, all right. Do you have anything else you want to just do this? So, the um, when you, going back to the whole letting people through the gate, and, and they, they actually eventually did let, I think, about 50 people in. And, of course, people are going to come, you know, continue to come. Um, a lot of people probably saw that light from very far away and are still making it there, which we do see that in the end. But so at the, when Madison pulls Alicia away, Alicia is inspecting the refugees for bite marks, the female refugees for bite marks. Mm -hmm. And that's when Madison pulls her away to have her little heart to heart. And my boyfriend and I both thought, you know, if one of those refugee women doesn't get inspected by Alicia and she turns and infects a bunch of people in the compound, that's on Madison too. <laughs> well, it's, well, we'll get into that in bold predictions. Alrighty. So that was, I, I'm done with my rotting potpourri on that. I just wanted to add that to yours. Okay. All right. So bold predictions here. Bold so predictions. so let, let's, let's deal. So we've got two episodes, two hours left. Mm-hmm. Those are called Wrath and North. Wrath and North. Okay. Yep. So even better. Yep. So Wrath is the drug lord gang coming to the town because we Mm -hmm. know they find it. They see Nick there. So got it. Narco the narco. Yep. Found them. So Wrath is them going to be coming through and assaulting the town. Yes. Essentially. North. Well, okay. Let's deal with them one at a time. Okay. Um, so who's all going to live? You know, I'm wondering if Alejandra lives. I'm thinking that, of course, Nick and, and Luciana live. Um, I'm sure a whole bunch of the people from the town die. And um, a lot of people from the cartel die. 
But as far as our main characters, I'm pretty sure Nick and Luciana live. I don't know about Alejandro. Um, so I will assume that Alejandro is going to die. Really? Based on his presence creates more problems for the Walking Dead universe and the overall storyline. Okay. His uh, bite wound survival. Yeah, I think we might get some more uh, truth to that bite just as the assault is happening. I think they're going to wrap up some loose ends really fast before they like they're getting to an argument about it and then he just like comes clean and it breaks Luciana's heart just as they hear some gunshots and then they have to charge into battle. You know, like it's gonna semi be resolved and then all hell's gonna break loose. Okay. Okay. The cheese that, way out of it. That I will give you. I I cause I, I keep in my in my mind's eye I keep picturing Alejandro uh, Nick Luciana and Alejandro stumbling to the uh, the hotel and how Alejandro gets on with the rest of the group and I just don't see it happening so okay I will grant you Alejandro dies in either a hail of gunfire or he gets poetically ripped apart by zombies yeah. Um, I think we're going to get some admission of like the reason I survived. It was because it was the kid on drugs, not the actual walkers that bit me in, but everybody's seen it as the walker because mm-hmm. he talks, you know, that kid, he was just like one of them, but he was on drugs. Yep. That was the person who bit him. That was yeah. the, that's the only reason for them talking about it. Yeah. And referencing that. So I think that's going to come out just as the assault's happening. So that's the quick resolution to that so they can close the book. Then I think it's going to be Nick, Luciana, and maybe, you may be right there, because just like Eugene, we found out Eugene's big secret, but they kept him around. That's true. That's true. They keep him around because he is semi a doctor. Those three do escape, and they head north. Yep. They had, or actually, well, they would stay there. They would, because isn't the, the resort is south of the city. See, and I keep getting confused with that too, because, so. Because it's north, it's north to Tijuana. So. Because Tijuana is right across the border from San Diego. Well, and the farmhouse was in Baja, um, because they keep referring it to, uh, in the, the synopsis as the Baja farmhouse. And so the, the, um, I keep wanting to say lost boys, Lord of the flies was headed North cause they were going to San Diego. Mm-hmm. So the, the, um, hotel has to be North. Yeah. Cause it's in Tijuana right over the border. So I don't know where that little town is. I uh, think the town is closest to the border, the drug town, the cartel, the, okay. all that. I think that is closer to the border because there's not a resort in Tijuana. There are no resorts in Tijuana. Right. They're south right. down like Cabo and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm assuming it goes um, resort or Baja or um, yeah, the, the farmhouse resort, then hideout, then San Diego. Okay. Um, so I would assume all of that happens. Then they also just start going north which then takes you into North episode of when everybody's getting to the hotel. Cause it's kind of like the last stop or no, did I just say that wrong? Yeah. God, I'm so confused. Screw it. One of the groups is going to go North to meet the other group. That's how they're all going to get back together. <laughs> Basically everyone's going to get back together except for Ophelia because she's probably already in the U S by now. So, well, so my, my, my bold prediction for Ophelia is that, she is going to be the final scene in the season finale. And it's going to be her like driving and then like slowing down. And it's going to be like her face. And she's going to be like, Papa. Oh God. You're, I didn't even think of that. Cause yeah, we keep saying we haven't seen Daniel's body. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's so that's, that's my, that's to me is the big cliffhanger. Cause we all love Daniel. Yeah. And this show loves to do that crap. 
So, and, and even Chris loves Daniel because um, in my little bit of research, Daniel was teaching Chris how to shoot a gun. Uh-huh. And Travis interfered with that. Travis was like, you know, don't teach my son how, you know, blah, blah, blah. He was totally against it. So that would be awesome if Daniel came back into the group and there was, we had that cohesion again. He is. He's going to come back into the group. It's going to be a very different group. It's going to be. I think it's going to be like when Morgan rejoins the group and he's like, what the hell is going on with you, Rick? Yeah. I think that's yeah. how Daniel's going to rejoin the group is he's going to kind of rejoin it and be like, what the hell happened in the two weeks since you burned this place down? <laughs> I agree. I agree. Those are some excellent po- bold predictions. So, okay. So now let's, let's kind of go back then to the hotel. How's the hotel okay. going to end? Give me your thoughts first. The hotel's going to get overrun, um, and at the, of course, the very end, we see Brandon and Derek arriving at the gate, uh, possibly sans Chris, although I think that's just some creative editing for the, um, the promo, Mm -hmm. but so I think stuff's going to go down with, uh, Brandon and Derek and the hotel just getting overrun by refugees. Um, and that could be the end of the hotel for our group because you can never settle. I mean, in walking dead proper, you know, lost the prison. You're, we're sort of losing the town bit by bit, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. people just can never settle. So they can't stay at the hotel. Um, and I, I really think that maybe they'll head back north and that's maybe why the, the episode's called North, but yeah. So I see it kind of multiple ways. So let's break it down. <laughs> no, the, I paid for that sound effect. That was pretty cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so the lost boys, how are they going to get in? Something They're going to be let in. Well, so that's the thing. I think they're going to be let in without Travis at the gate. Yes, absolutely. Travis is exhausted. So Travis he's is not guarding the gate. Well, he got a shower, so he's good now. <laughs> um, I think Travis is going to see them and be like, "No, where's Chris? Where's Chris?" Um, and then it's going to end in a kind of a gun battle between a few. Uh huh. And those gunshots are going to be what brings the Walker herds. Mm, yeah. Because it's not going to end well. It is not going no. to end well with these kids. Not at all. It can't. Not at all. Right. Uh, you know, and they they're gonna die. They're going to die horribly. But it's just a matter of are they going to take anybody with them? Mm-hmm. And I do see some people being taken with them, being these odd characters from the family and. Oscar and Elena and yeah. Yeah. So I kind of see that kind of petering out in that, in that kind of facet, but the hotel is going to be gone. They're going to kill off probably eight of those people in some way, shape or form Mm -hmm. because we seen it when Chris first has the interaction with those kids is that those kids killed two people in that restaurant that they were in. Blood just to, yeah, just to get whatever was in the restaurant that they wanted. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's probably going to be their assumption and something's going to start and then everyone's going to fight back. Travis is going to obviously recognize them or catch them in the act of doing something and kind of spoil it. And then it's going to turn into a bigger war. And then that's what's going to start drawing the herds because the gunshot rings out forever. So that's going to start to happen. And then... When that's kind of over and everyone's sad and crying because of the loss of life and they're kind of on the run again, then they're going to run into Nick and Luciana and whoever in that kind of an aspect. And then it's going to kind of die out and then you're going to see Ophelia say, Papa, and that's going to be it. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. That that would be, yeah, Brian, you should write for the show. I probably would have done much better. <laughs> uh, yeah, you probably could have. There would have been none of this. I'm going to, you know, I'm so mad at Madison for turning that light on. But on the other hand, we got Travis back because of it. 
But that was not her intention. Her intention was to signal Nick wherever right. he was in Mexico, if he was still alive, you know, on, on the off chance that the, the gringo with the ratty hair was still alive. I'm just, I'm so mad at her, but we got Chris back for it. So I'm like, ah. Yeah, it was very frustrating. And I mean, we all knew that they were going to come back together at some point. Right. Even though I hoped they weren't going to, they right. all were. And right. the generators kicking on and Madison being the pain in the ass that she always is. Of course, it's going to be her doing something stupid. And then she's so she's, dangerous for the group. That's she just, is. That, it, that's what kills me is she's always trying to give everyone direction. And then she just goes off and does whatever she wants to do, whether it's like busting in on Marco, the narcos interrogation of those people, you know, in real life, Madison was dead on day three of the apocalypse. Well, she was dead the minute she charged into that room. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, kill her. I mean, she actually should have been shot at the gate when they were still gated into their block. Yeah. I mean, she had an issue with the the army dudes. And, you know, it would not have shocked me to see, you know, one of them in there. We're getting out of here because they're going to start bombing the valley um, to just be like, you know what? You're a pain in the butt and just shoot her. You know, you're going to die in three hours anyway. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> So we're on the same boat. Um, and, you know, um, I I think I figured out today why people are so frustrated with the show. Why is that? So be, I'll post it on, on the website, on the Biter's uh, Facebook page. But um, one year, or I think it was one year, two years, two years, uh, maybe it was three. Uh, I had a Facebook memory come up today and I sent you the article and it was the announcement of the pilot for Fear the Walking Dead. And they gave some character names and some character descriptions. And we see now that the character names have changed fastly. And some of the character descriptions have kind of are kind of muddled. And there's a character that's listed that's not actually in the show. And But in the stuff that I, I remember reading about Fear the Walking Dead that's coming. It's it has no source materials, and it's it's what happened when Rick was in his coma. You know, it's the beginning of the apocalypse, and we're going to see how it all broke down. You know, we are really just dealing with the same stuff that we are dealing with on Walking Dead proper. Um, it is conflict with warlords and family strife, and it just you know. I think a lot of us expected to see more like FEMA camps and, you know, we like basically the first half of season one, or I guess season one was only a half, but you know, where we have the military and we have some quarantine zones and some detention centers. And I don't know if it was maybe um, budget constrictions that we're not seeing a lot of that. I would have expected a lot more, a slower breakdown. I feel that we're only a few months into this thing and already there's no military. There's no police. There's no government structure. We have not seen any sort of, um, red cross or anything like that. So that's kind of what I think a lot of us were expecting is, you know, the kind of the 28 days later where you're still in, in major towns and, there's still some sort of loose structure, but, you know, they can't contain the outbreak. So we have to, like, you know, move on from Houston to Dallas. And so I think a lot of us are expecting that, not this, you know, there's just a band of, you know, eight people. And we're, we're all trying to find farmhouses to hide out in and wait for help. And I, I think that's where a lot of people get frustrated is that we expected something a lot different. And it's really not that different except that we really don't care about these characters. Right. Well, I care about Ophelia. I care about Chris. And, and, and Alicia. I care about Ophelia and Alicia. Yeah, Alicia. <laughs> Alicia breaks my heart, that girl. I really hope that she becomes the baddie. And, you know, when we saw Ophelia last episode, the, you know, the episode Pillar of Salt, um, I actually, I was like, what is Luciana doing? Like, 
I thought that was Lucy because she was so like, I'm going to, I'm going to get gas from this tank and I'm going to knife this walker in the head. And, you know, just, it's like, where did this Ophelia come from? I mean, yeah. she had a fiance and, you know, we originally, we met Ophelia in like a baby doll dress living with her parents. And all of a sudden, you know, she's, you know, the chick from uh, Resident Evil. So, Boom. yeah. Take that. Yeah. So I think that's where a lot of frustration comes from is um, it's it was promised as one thing and it's copying Walking Dead proper too much, but with characters we care less about. Sure. So that's that is where I leave you. That is the date of death. Boom. All right. Well, uh, do you know how we sign this bad boy off? I do, and Diane and I weren't quite so good at it last week, so we'll see if you and I can do better. All right, so just like Dance and I lead. Ready? All righty. All right, remember, everybody, let's take it. Take it. One, One dead, dead day, day at, at a time. time. Not no, bad. Well, it's debatable, but I'm sure we did better than your sister, right? We, we did, actually. Boom. Yeah. That's all that matters to me. It sounded like I was echoing her. So. <laughs> see you later. All righty. Thanks, Bri. Bye. Bye.